Good evening all and welcome to tonight's episode of Vision of Asia. I'm Aditi Lamba. This is our special ongoing report on COVID-19 crisis. Hope you're doing well and also taking care of yourselves and loved ones around you. Today, World Health Organization said that it's preparing to launch an appeal soon for more than $1 billion to fund its operations. The United Nations said that it needs more resources than ever as it leads the global response against the disease that now has infected more than 1.4 million people across the globe. We are coming to you tonight from a remote location in New York City, and this city continues to be the epicenter of the outbreak with most number of deaths, more than 7,000 Americans. We send our condolences to all that have lost a loved one due to COVID-19. This has been quite a heavy week, so again, we hope for the safety and security of everyone. And here is another shout out for all the frontliners who continue to work every day, trying to save as many Americans as possible. We salute medical and healthcare workers, first responders, and many others. Remember to donate any extra N95 masks or other personal protective equipment to your local hospitals, clinics, and other facilities. They are in need and every PPE counts. Reach us on events at itvgold.com if you are donating food or PPE or conducting any relief efforts for the community. Here are some pictures of Meals for Heroes, a foundation that is delivering meals to local hospitals in New Jersey. Their intention is to support local hospitals and businesses through the coronavirus pandemic. Such a great effort, they recently provided over 2,000 meals to hospitals across New York and New Jersey. It's a wonderful thing seeing such positive stories during this time period that makes you reflect upon humanity and kindness. So tonight's episode features that along with more media and medical perspectives on the ongoings with COVID-19. Here are the headlines. The juggernaut featuring Snigna Sur, COVID-19, politics, real journalism, ITV Gold. Actress Sonal Shah on Disney's Mira, Royal Detective, celebrating South Asian identity, ITV Gold. Dr. Bhudev Sharma explains coronavirus pandemic and updates JFK Medical Center, New Jersey. It's time for a short break right now on Vision of Asia, Voice of the Community. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly. <music> Welcome back. I'm Aditi Lamba and this is Vision of Asia special report on the coronavirus impact, measures and updates. In India, the response to COVID-19 crisis has seen a nationwide lockdown until April 14th by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi saying that it is the only way to avoid a catastrophe in India where public health may be weak in a country with 1.3 billion people. We recently spoke to Snigda Sur, CEO of the Juggernaut, addressing all the on-ground insights coming in from India and the United States, which impacts the South Asian voice and needs during this crisis. The Juggernaut is a premium publication that focuses on well-reported stories from South Asia, bringing forth smart journalism and well-executed research narratives. Snigda provide us an in-depth perspective on the emerging crisis of COVID-19 in South Asia, along with updates on South Asian Americans here. We also spoke to Snigda on yesterday's breaking news in 2020 presidential race. Senator Bernie Sanders folded his Democratic campaign, clearing former Vice President Joe Biden's path to the Democratic nomination. Here is our interview with Snigda. What's been really interesting during this time is if you look at um, website data or traffic data, a lot of media companies are actually experiencing spikes in unique visitors, as well as increases in engagement time, as in people are staying at home, they're reading more, they're watching more, and you, you can see these phenomena through, you know, the virality of Tiger King on Netflix, or the fact that the New York Times has nearly almost doubled its monthly traffic. Uh, in the last two months and even seeing, you know, people like you still continuing to report during this time because people are still craving uh, knowledge about not just COVID, but you kind of see a bifurcation. You see there's a bunch of consumption on COVID news, but there's, there's also a bunch of escapism, which explains Tiger King. People don't want to be reading about COVID 24 seven all the time for many people. And so they're seeking those kind of two types of entertainment, which is informative news or 
let me just kind of escape it and enjoy cooking or doing something else. You're also seeing the rise of Instagram Live because of that. In terms of how publishers prepare for that, right. I think their challenge is going to be, how do we convert this increased engagement and this increased traffic into revenue? Because a lot of media publishers who rely on advertisers are realizing that a lot of advertisers are pulling back extra spending. They're also realizing because they're providing so much COVID content for free, so are we, right. that stuff isn't translating to revenue. So that's going to be their challenge. In terms of what we're doing on the ground, the way we operate is we work with over 100 freelance journalists around the world. Right. And um, the benefit of, you know, of the way journalists can operate as you are doing right now is that we have obviously advised all our journalists, please try not to do field reporting in the sense that like, you don't need to go meet people in person right now. So all of our journalists have been doing phone calls and getting as much information as possible by calling as many people and you know being safe. So we've still been able to operate. In terms of the content we're covering, we were some of the first to cover a lot of the potential impact of COVID on South Asia. So when everybody was focused on China and America and Italy, um, right. As early as early February, before people realized it was a global pandemic, we reported on, here's what scientists are expecting will happen in South Asia. And unsurprisingly, a lot of scientists were saying, well, you know, India isn't a global travel hub, a global travel hub so yeah. India won't be impacted, which is, when you really think about it, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, what ended up happening with India is that the first three cases were in Karnataka from students who had studied in Wuhan. That's fine. So a lot of it came from Wuhan. But then the second spike came from Italian tourists who entered via Delhi and then went to Rajasthan. Right. So what people have forgotten is that actually India has become a really hot tourist destination. Delhi has grown, um, risen in the ranks to become one of the 11th most popular cities for people to travel into. So when you look at that new reality, you realize that Western media is still catching up to um, the ground reality of India's growth and India's popularity yeah. and just the general kind of travel in South okay. Asia. Uh, yeah. Bernie Sanders has dropped out of the race, um, basically leaving uh, you know, former Vice President Joe Biden an open field uh, for the Democratic uh, nomination. Your take on what happened with the Sanders campaign and um, you know, as a publishing house, a media house, what do you have to say about how they rallied together for the last so many months? Yeah, sure. So we were um, one of the early ones to cover Bernie Sanders and his popularity among South Asian Americans. Right. So he, he, his campaign just really resonated with what we call the rise of the South Asian progressives. They're often younger. They're often, um, you know, they, they care about Medicare for all. They care about uh, um, eliminating student debt. And he managed to really draw a huge support base from this community. Um, and you could also see that from the Queen's rally he hosted. He had, um, you know, rapper Anik Khan, who's Bangladeshi American. He um, tapped into Chaya, which is a Bangladeshi ad advocacy network and nonprofit. So yeah. Sanders really was able to um, kind of rally a lot of these younger South Asians who, you know, who really believed in a lot of his vision and a lot of uh, what he stood for. And if you look at the numbers and how he was polling, um, even in 2016, when you see the numbers, um, you can see that he specifically had resonance amongst like Pakistani Americans and Bangladeshi Americans, right. who, whose um, parents in 2016 had a smaller rate of uh, incidence of voting for Clinton. So Clinton was much more popular among Indian Americans, for example, and a little bit less popular among Pakistani Americans and Bangladeshi Americans. And Bernie was more popular among them. So you can kind of already start seeing these differences within uh, nationalities, which again, are still not the best, you know, psychographic to really explain what's happening in trends, but is one metric. So Bernie Sanders going out, you know, he represented a lot to a lot of South Asian Americans. It also helped that his campaign manager was Pakistani American, Faith yeah. Shakir. Yeah. We also interviewed him for the juggernaut and talked about how he has also influenced Bernie's campaign. When you see somebody who looks like you running a national campaign for one of the leaders of the Democratic candidacy, candidacy it right. changed the entire conversation. 2020, more than any other year, had many South Asian Americans leading national campaigns, from Kamala Harris's campaign manager, Rohini Kosoglu, to right. um, Cory Booker, uh, Cory Booker, Sabrina Singh, who then worked on both went on to work with Bloomberg. So in yeah. terms of the way we think about the news, highly suggest you check out our story on Bernie Sanders and the rise of the progressives, as well as our interview with Faiz Shakir to really understand what's happening. 
Looking at the world count, there are currently more than 1.6 million cases of coronavirus globally with more than 91,000 deaths. Here in the United States, we are looking at more than 400,000 cases and more than 15,000 deaths in the nation due to COVID-19 crisis. So please do stay inside and stop the spread of this disease. Also, keep up with updates from your state and the federal government and visit cdc.gov for all latest information and updates on the crisis. Here is Dr. Bhudev Sharma, who spoke with ITV Gold, educating the audience in understanding these number of cases and deaths and gave his opinion on the percentage of global infections caused by COVID-19. He also provided his advice for the community on increase of anxiety, fear and panic due to this pandemic. Let's take a look at Dr. Pudev Sharma coming in from JFK Medical Center in New Jersey. Here is the story. This is Dr. Pudev Sharma. I'm a cardiologist at JFK Medical Center. I've been the past president of the JFK Medical Dental Staff. What we want to educate the American people about is how to interpret the coronavirus pandemic numbers. We hear on the TV that so many deaths occurred every day. That is creating panic and fear because people do not understand the numerator and the denominator. The numerator is actual, is factual, because that is the number of deaths that have taken place from the coronavirus. The denominator is actually low because we have not tested everybody. So when we talk about a fatality rate of 1.6, we're talking about number of deaths divided by the number of cases tested. In actuality, it is number of deaths with the denominator being number of cases that got the infection in the first place. So if you add asymptomatic people to the number of patients that were tested, that denominator becomes a big, big number and the case fatality goes down. So if we start comparing these numbers to any large flu epidemic, we'll realize that these numbers are much lower than any large flu epidemic. Last year, for example, there were 34,000 deaths from the flu virus in the United States. The flu season runs, let's say, from October to the end of March. So let's say six months. So that would be 26 weeks. And if you divide 34,000 deaths with 26, you get a number of 1,300 deaths per week on average. Now these are not constant because in one week they may be less, in the other week at the peak of the season they may be much higher. The corona epidemic has not reached these numbers yet. We have not had any deaths more than 1,300 in any week in the United States. So this is creating fear and panic in the public. We want to do this educational video so that people understand these numbers in context to what can happen in any large flu epidemic. So instead of fearing the epidemic, we do the right things to contain it. Yes, we have to take all the measures to try and prevent the spread of this virus. We need to wash our hands. We need to mask ourselves. We need to have social distancing. So all those things do work and are necessary. But it is also necessary that we don't promote fear and panic in the public by always quoting the number of deaths that particular day or week. We should tell them how it compares to other epidemics and that we are still okay. We should still continue to do what we need to do to prevent the spread, but not be taken by these numbers because they really are not true numbers, as I just said in my previous statement. Thank you. It's time for another short break on Vision of Asia. Voice of the Community will be back shortly. Welcome back. This is Vision of Asia, Coronavirus Pandemic Special Report, and I am Aditi Lamba. 
We now have a story which hopes to be more positive and send a message of unity and solidarity in the community while we as a nation face this outbreak. We recently spoke to American actress Sonal Shah on Disney's new animated series, Mira, Royal Detective, along with more on Sonal Shah's passionate journey in the industry and her love for South Asian culture and identity. Hailing from Illinois, Sonal Shah is also a singer, a dancer, and a content creator and has featured in network comedies, short films, TV shows, and much more. Here is a segment of our very interesting chat with the actress who urged all to focus on self-care and positive spirit during this pandemic. Also, if you still haven't seen Disney's latest show, Mira, Royal Detective, be sure to check it out and explore South Asian culture heritage on an educational and an entertaining level. Here is our virtual interview with actress Sonal Shah. You know, right now taking into account coronavirus, COVID, you know, and, and the staying, staying at home, you know, my heart, it's, um, it's heavy time and it's a dark time. And I feel, uh, I mean, I, me along with everyone is, you know, we're weighted by what's going on in the world and how it's affecting the people who are getting sick and their families, as well as the people affected by loss of work and uh, industries shutting down, all of that. The one uh, thing that's happening now with Mira is that if we're in such a world of darkness that there is a light that Mira has that when, you know, and kids are home and they need it, 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 it like she's such a perfect, she, the show is such a perfect, um, like tool in terms of having that light and, and, uh, and having that joy in people's homes right now. And so in terms of the adults, it's, this is a show that everyone can enjoy and that everyone can dance along to in their apartments or in their ho houses and you know because and this is the time to dance you know because sometimes what else can we do you think he stole the gem maybe we need to talk to him small problem the musicians are leaving excuse me musicians can't talk we're out of here quick double time <gasps> they're running away deputy usha stop them <gasps> Excuse me, sir. Did you steal the gem of Jalpur? No, of course he didn't. We're musical artists, not thieves. Yeah. Besides, if I did steal it, where is it now? Right there, in your turban. That's Whoa, it. Amazing. Crazy. <gasps> Unbelievable. What? I have no idea how this got here. I do. You came in with a fake green gem in your turban. Then you swapped it for the real blue one. Yes, that is the real gem of Jalpur. Brilliant job, Mira. Take them away, Deputy Usha. You may have caught us this time, but we'll be back. <laughs> and yeah, for sure. And you know, I kind of want to dig in a little bit more into what you are up to right now. Um, we have seen you in a range of. TV shows, you've done so many short films. Um, I mean, so many short films, it's incredible. Um, and then oh. you're doing so many TV shows that are you know, really representing you as a South Asian woman. You're really celebrated as one of the, the women who sort of broke into you know, network comedy show um, you know, on prime time. Talk to me about how that journey is going right now and uh, what are some of the plans that are going on? <laughs> well, first of all, thank you. That's very nice of you. <laughs> I, um, I mean, no, yeah, I guess I, my family's in Chicago and I came out to Los Angeles so uh, quite some time ago and I, I work really hard <laughs> and I am, uh, that's something that's just been true since I was born. And, um, I guess right now I am, well, Parvesh and I, Parvesh who plays the other bumbling bandit, uh, we are, we have a development project with Disney right now. That's all I can say about it. <laughs> um, but that's happening, which is fun. And also, uh, what else am I doing? I teach, a, I co-teach an acting class with John Rosenfeld Studios. And uh, so I'm doing that. I'm dancing a lot, as I said. I'm also writing a lot and uh and then also auditioning we're doing some we're doing tapes at home and uh there have been 
you know, there's been some cool interest here and there with that. So I'm just, but in terms of right now and what's going on, I'm really trying to embrace the, the, like kind of embrace wherever I'm at every day, you know, if it means crying, then I cry, you know, when, if it means writing, then I write. And, but having that, uh, being in that creative process and meditating and journaling and taking this time to connect more with, um, others right. through zoom and FaceTime and through, and through, uh, in, in that way in technological ways, but also connect more with myself. Right. And, um, yeah, that, that space artistically. You know, I ask you this all because um, obviously with COVID-19 and with everything that's happening in this pandemic, we are basically shut down and you also in California are, are hit pretty hard with this virus. Um, in terms of looking at the industry itself, Hollywood, television, of all in, in all spectrum, um, your take on what's happening uh, with the industry right now and you know, what kind of efforts have you seen in terms of relief and also what kind of, uh, you know, content uh, is, is happening while, you know, everything is shut and it's a lot of jobs and it's a lot of creativity. Um, I want to dig in a little bit into what is the atmosphere around there right now in L.A.? Well, I, I don't really know because I haven't left my apartment in so many, so long. I know, I'm too. It's social distancing. Yes. <laughs> I'm social distancing. So, yeah, I really, I really have not left yes. uh, in weeks. Uh, but, uh, but, yeah, I guess, though, there, it, this is a tie. You know, there is this... Um, you know, that spirit of connectedness is happening right now. And, you know, we are all alone together in this. And whatever is affecting one person is just, there is solace in knowing that it's affecting everybody. Everybody, everybody in the world is affect, affected by, it. everyone in the world is affected by this in some way or another. And that is, it's... Uh, I'm not going to say it's incredible because it's not incredible, but there is something where as a community of and citizens of the world, this is the biggest thing we've all gone through together in the first, the first time in our lives. Um, right now, at least in my life, you know, uh, that, uh, that, um, and th that we are, there is a call for unity and connectedness. And yeah, as you said, in terms of Hollywood and creativity, I think we're all, you know, there's, without having the pressure of it all and, you know, this need to, oh, well, I have to be productive every day all the time because acknowledging, though, that there, this is, there is a pandemic going on, I know that, I mean, at least for me, I've always, like, I think just even without being an actor, but my life goal has always been to kind of give as much joy and smiles to the world as possible and uh so at, at, at least and I, I feel like that's what when I talk to my friends who are artists and everyone's kind of like okay how can we make people laugh during this how can we collaborate to do that and so you know, like my friend and I are doing a, a little web series right now and things like on Zoom and, you know, things like that. And, um, but also, you know, having, taking the time to have this space of, you know, as a space away from that need to always do and just embrace being, because we don't get to do that often. So that, at least for me, is sort of, um, it's important to take this time to, just and this is all for the show for tonight. Remember to send us your suggestions and get your voices and organizations on our show. Email us on events at itvgold.com or follow us on Facebook at itvgold. Remember, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch many of our popular shows for free. Thank you for joining us tonight from Queens, New York. This is Vision of Asia. I am Aditi Lamba. Take care and be well.